intimate partner violence, or just clumsy. Nurses who work in emergency departments, urgent care clinics, or other settings, or patients come for evaluation of an injury due to an accident, must develop advanced skills to assess the safety of a patient at home. All nurses should inquire about the safety of the patient's living environment prior to discharge. In the following scene, a young woman and her boyfriend present to the emergency department for treatment of an injury to the woman's upper arm. Note how the nurse establishes rapport with both the patient and her boyfriend. The nurse continues to assess the situation for signs of intimate partner violence. Notice the technique used by the nurse. She is alone with the woman to further question her. In this situation, the boyfriend is cooperative. However, in situations where there may be human trafficking, the nurse may find the accompanied person hovering or more resistant to leave the room. Listen to the assessment questions the nurse asks to assess the potential of the situation where intimate partner violence may be responsible for the injury. Also note non the non-judgmental approach of the nurse when examining the bruise on the patient's arm. Listen to the assessment questions the nurse asks to assess the, for the potential of a situation where intimate partner violence is responsible for this injury. Also note the non-judgmental approach of the nurse when examining the bruise on the patient's arm. This woman also discusses her anxiety and possible misuses of a medication to treat her anxiety. Persons in violent relationships often are diagnosed with anxiety, depression, or both. Office visits for the treatment of anxiety and depression can offer the opportunity to gather additional information related to the safety of the home environment and how the environment contributes to the mental health of the patient. Hi there, Riley. Hi. I'm the admitting nurse for the emergency department. My name is Josh. Um, I've worked here about three years, so you are in good hands. Uh, so please, tell me what brings you into the emergency department today. I was running and I tripped on the curb and I think I broke my upper arm. It hurts really bad. Yeah, uh, she can be pretty clumsy sometimes. <laughs> All right, and when did the fall occur? Yesterday morning, but I couldn't sleep, so I decided I should come get it checked out today. I, I tried to bring her yesterday, but she thought she'd be fine. I, I put some ice on it. I used to play high school basketball, so I know how to deal with minor injuries. But I, I brought her here today. I'm, I'm just really worried about her. Well, we'll have the doctor come in and check on her in just a few minutes, but uh, I do have some additional questions for you, Riley. Okay. Um, are you taking any medications currently? Yes, I take one milligram of Xanax three times a day. I've had panic attacks. It helps with those. Okay. And how long would you say you've been experiencing these panic attacks? I don't know, maybe, a f I don't know. <laughs> Did you say like a month, a it, year, it's or been, It's been three months. Uh, right, Riley? I'm, I think it's just due to her new boss at her work. Um, he's, he's always on edge and taking it out on his employees. I mean, I, I don't know what's wrong with the guy. Just a bad boss. I guess that's true, but I would really just like to get my arm figured out and then go to work and go home. Okay. Um, have you been experiencing any headaches, any dry mouth, maybe dizziness? I think I was dizzy the day I tripped, so... Yeah, yeah, now, now that you mention it, those pills probably are making her really dizzy and clumsy. <laughs> All right. Well, Matt, I'm going to examine Riley now. Um, but for the sake of privacy, I'm going to ask you to leave the room. I, I, don't, I don't think that's needed. I, we live together. I mean, they, it's not like I would see anything I haven't already seen. That may be true, but technically you're not legally a relative, but, and it is our policy. Riley, that. do you want me to go? No, you could stay. Matt, it's our policy that non-relatives must leave the room during an examination. Okay. But, Riley... I will be right outside the door waiting for you. Actually, Matt, maybe you could go to the cafeteria and get Riley a soda. She does seem to have pretty bad dry mouth. 
That would be really nice. I am quite thirsty. Would you like that, Riley? That would be nice. All right, Riley. Why don't we take that sleeve down and you can show me how it hurts. Okay. Um. Let's lift it up. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna lift oh, this up. Yeah. Move it down. <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay. Does it hurt when I touch here? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's put this back. All right, Riley. Let's put your arm back down. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you look at your arm back. I'm gonna come All right. So, Riley. Those bruises don't look very conducive to a fall off the curb. Is there something else that might have occurred? No, like I said, I fell on the curb. Okay. Uh, do you feel safe in your apartment? It has a locked entrance. Of course I feel safe. Okay. So how did you two meet? Mm, we met my last year of high school when we were both 18 and we had the same circle of friends. I mean, we spent a lot of time together. He was always the funny guy who was trying to get the attention, so I was really shocked that he noticed me, naturally. But we started going on dates and spending even more time together, and it seemed like he really got me, you know? Like, my friends really liked him. He would buy me sweaters or jewelry and ask me to wear them on dates. I mean, I loved all, the, all of the attention he was giving me. And then we moved here to go to school. And then Matt decided that school wasn't important for us. So two years later, we're like an old married couple. <laughs> I mean, we fight, but I know he loves me. I mean, whenever there's a fight, there's a beautiful bouquet of roses the next day or a necklace. I mean, he makes up for it. Okay, and is there anybody who might want to cause you harm? No, like Matt said, I'm just clumsy. He's always telling me to watch out, and I just wasn't looking careful, I guess. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about these panic attacks? You said you've been having them for a couple of months now? Yes, I feel like my heart starts beating really fast, and it felt like I was going to have a heart attack the first time. And then I started crying, and I couldn't stop for hours, so Matt decided to take me to a doctor to get me medicine because he couldn't stand the crying. All right, well, it looks like the doctor has ordered a, an x-ray for you, so the tech will escort you over to the x-ray room. Okay. Yeah, yeah I see him. <clears throat> Where is she? I, I thought, who, who is she talking to now? I thought we were coming here for an x-ray. Well, she's, I, she's in I'm the x-ray really right now. She's in the x-ray right now. Why don't you go to the waiting room and have a seat? I'll catch you when she's done. <laughs> hey, Rabby. Hi. So, Riley, I'm a little worried that uh, you think the Xanax made you dizzy. Mm -hmm. Have you changed your dosage any recently? Um, that morning, I had been having some trouble getting up for work, so I decided to take two Xanax instead of one. So I think that might have been the reason why I was so dizzy. I don't remember much, though. Okay, Riley, it looks like the x-ray is showing that you did, in fact, break your arm. <sighs> okay. Okay, well, that's great. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know what to do then because Matt says that I have to go to work, and if we don't make money, then I, I don't know what to do. Sweetheart, I mean, can I still what's, go? What's, what's wrong? What's wrong? I just, I just want to go to work. Can I still go to work? Yeah, with she this? can go to work, right? I I, I can drive her and I'll pick her up. I mean, I mean she's just, clumsy, but she can deal with the pain. I know she can. Give her some pills. I'm, she can do any activity that doesn't require her to raise her arm, and I hope that she'll be able to get back to work soon. 
but maybe not today. Okay, I'll be right back, all right? Oh. Great. All right, Riley, the physical therapist will be in shortly to show you how to put this on. We're gonna need you to wear the arm sling for about four weeks until it's recovered. I have made an appointment for you to see an orthopedic doctor, um, just to make sure that there are no other concerns. Uh, Matt, I will hope that you can bring her to this appointment. Oh, uh, of course. Only the best for my girl. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> well, you drive me to work, Matt. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to tell everybody how clumsy I am. <laughs> now, Riley, mixing Xanax with pain medication will make you even dizzier than before. So I would definitely suggest talk to, talking to the pharmacist and making sure there are no other concerns. Uh, but if you have any concerns or there's any more pain, just feel free to call us, okay? Okay. Now, all I need from you is a signature on this release form and you'll be all good to go. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. I'll try to remember all of that. <laughs> This patient ended with the nurse offering referrals to organizations that might help this young woman. Question number one, do you think the woman fell off the curb and broke her upper arm? If you do not believe this is true, what should the nurse do? How might healthcare providers offer information on domestic violence shelters to patients in a matter that is safe for the patient? The boyfriend seemed concerned about the well-being of his girlfriend. Did this surprise you? What behaviors might nurses expect when a couple comes in for treatment of an injury related to intimate partner violence? How did this couple compare to your readings related to intimate partner violence? <laughs>